Hello, my name is Scott Nye, and today I'm going to be talking about Policing Black Lives, State Violence in Canada from Slavery to the Present. It was written by Robin Maynard and published in 2017 by Fernwood Publishing. So I mentioned on social media, and I don't remember exactly which platform, before I read this book, that I expected that it was going to be one of the most important books published in Canada this year. And I can say without any reservation, after having read this book, that that is indeed the case. Police and Black Lives was written by Robin Maynard. She is a black feminist writer and a longtime anti-authoritarian organizer based in Montreal. I also hope she's a future guest on Talking Radical Radio, my weekly radio show and podcast that talks about social movements in the Canadian context. She's expressed some interest. We haven't quite managed to find a way to make the scheduling work, but I'm hopeful that we can find a way to do that in the new year. And the book is pretty much what it says on the tin. It looks at Canadian state violence, particularly anti-black state violence, from the early years of colonization, which means those long centuries in which slavery was just as Canadian an institution as cold winters and maple syrup, on up to the present. And like I said, it's a very powerful and important book, and I think that power and importance is partly related to the context into which this book is entering and in which it is doing its work, and also to the very effective way that it does that work. So in terms of the context into which this book is entering, uh, Early on in the book, Maynard quotes radical scholar Ronaldo Walcott, and if you want to learn more about some of his ideas, I'll link to an interview that I did with him uh, and a colleague of his a while ago down in the, in the down bar. Maynard quotes Walcott as describing the experiences of black individuals and black communities in Canada as, quote, an, an absented presence always under erasure, end quote. And she goes on to talk about how black experience in Canada combines a sort of hypervisibility and over surveillance on the one hand with a kind of erasure uh, and refusal of admission into dominant stories of here on the other hand. This means that despite the fact that there have at least for decades and in some ways for longer being mostly black scholars and writers and organizers in the Canadian context, writing about these things and organizing against these things, much of the media response to this book, which has, and this is a positive thing, been plentiful, I think, and, and quite positive, much of that response, though, presumes a certain newness to these ideas and these realities, rather than seeing this book as an important advance on a solid foundation of work that's been going on for a long, long time. And to put it more in a movement context, I think that, to a certain extent, non-black movements and communities and struggle, but certainly white-dominated social movements and communities and struggle in the Canadian context, tend to have a very shallow understanding of anti-blackness and what it is and how it shapes our lives, and particularly how central anti-blackness is to constituting Canada and to constituting how our lives work as white Canadians. So I think that and all of those manifestations of that sort of absented presence are what, a big part of why this book is so important and why it has the potential to be so powerful in, in challenging some of those uh, narratives of erasure and, and dehumanization. So in terms of how the book does the work that it does, I think it does it, it very effectively. Uh, and I think part of the power of how it does it is that it does it in a very straightforward kind of way. It takes a handful of important 
ideas, ideas that are politically important, that are theoretically powerful, and it just rigorously and methodically carries them through the historical trajectories that it looks at and the different areas of current day reality that it looks at. So I'll, I'll name a few of those, and I'm sure there are others that I'm missing. One is the really thorough feminist commitment to exploring the ways in which other aspects of identity and experience intersect with blackness to uh, shape how anti-black state violence is organized and how it's experienced by different people. And like the way that this book does this isn't just the sort of notional or throwaway way that you might often see in uh, sort of lefty and scholarly texts today. It's really thorough and really integral to how the book does what it does. Another important uh, core idea in the book is looking at the ways in which anti-blackness and settler colonialism are both distinct historical processes, but also very much interconnected. The book isn't as exhaustive in doing this, uh, and it freely admits that there's lots more work to be done in understanding that and in understanding how it should inform our struggles in the present, but it still does it more than most other critical writing that I have seen uh, about the Canadian context. Another important idea that the book takes up is a really expansive understanding of state violence. So it doesn't only talk about, for example, the direct violence uh, that black youth face at the hands of police. It does talk about that, and it talks about it uh, in some really important ways, but it also looks at state violence in a more expansive way, looking at other ways in which it manifests that aren't necessarily as visible, but that are just as destructive to black lives and black communities. For example, the violence of the child welfare system, the violence of the education system, the violence of the social assistance system, and things like that. And the final of these core ideas that I want to mention is the book's relentless commitment to going back to constantly to relate ways in which anti-blackness is socially organized today to the histories of anti-blackness and grounding the ways in which anti-blackness happens today in the Canadian context to the long histories of slavery in the Canadian context. Now, there are a few areas where, uh, you know, the book could have done more or probably uh, would have wanted to do more but wasn't able to. I don't think these particularly detract from the value of the book, but I'll mention them anyway. I already mentioned that there is definitely more uh, thinking and work to be done by, uh, by black radicals and indigenous radicals to uh, think through uh, the, the intersections of anti-blackness and settler colonialism, uh, and hopefully some of that thinking happens in contexts where uh, white folks on the left can learn from them and hopefully be transformed by them as well. Uh, but, you know, this book did plenty of that, and certainly, like I said, more than most things that I've seen. Uh, another thing that the book is quite open about is that it doesn't really talk a whole lot about resistance and struggle. It talks about them some, but it doesn't center that. And, I mean, you can make a pretty good case that there's value to uh, starting analyses of things like state violence or other forms of, of oppression and, and so on from the place of resistance, but, you know, I, that wasn't this book's project, and I, I think that's fine. Uh, and the, the only other thing is... Uh, the, the challenge that this book has in doing this work in the context of that uh, absented presence that I mentioned earlier. So one of the other ways that that manifests is that when data is being collected about you know, whatever social phenomena is of interest, often in the Canadian context it isn't collected in a way that you can uh, extract the, uh, the impacts of, of racism and anti-blackness and the specificities of experience of people who are racialized, of black people, from that data. Uh, and more broadly, there are kinds of social science research that are just routine and happen all the time in the United States 
that are, are focused on building those understandings of black experience and of uh, how systemic anti-blackness works that just don't happen as regularly or in some cases at all in the Canadian context. So there is that long history of lots of work by black scholars and writers and organizers, but the, the sort of field of material to draw from isn't necessarily as rich in the Canadian context as it is in other places. So that is one of the challenges in doing this kind of work here. That said, I think the the material that the book pull, the material that the book pulls together is extensive and it's woven together in a way that is like I said politically very powerful, theoretically rich and it makes for a really important book. So I think that's about all that I have to say about this book. Uh, I think the uptake of this book is really encouraging. That seems like there are lots of people who are reading it, who are talking about it. There's been quite a bit of media coverage. There seem to be lots of reviews floating around, all of which I think is great. It wouldn't do to underestimate the capacity that we have as white Canadians to not internalize all of the, the lessons, uh, the significance, the importance of anti-blackness in shaping everything about how life works here in uh, Northern Turtle Island. Uh, and I include in that the left, and I also include in that the radical left. But nonetheless, I still think this book is an important addition to the broader upsurge in black struggle in Canada and in North America and in the world in the last number of years. And I think it'll be an important tool that will be taken up and used in a variety of ways in the context of movements and communities and struggle. And thinking specifically of the kinds of movement contexts that I'm connected to in one way or another, I think for those of us who are connected to movements that tend to be uh, white dominated tend to be significantly shaped by whiteness. I think that this book is a, a tool that we can use to inform uh, and push forward our own ongoing difficult conversations about how we need to be doing the things that we're doing. So, like I said, this is a very important book. Uh, it's also a very readable book, and I encourage you to pick it up, to read it, to think about it, to talk about it. My name is Scott Nye. I have been talking about Policing Black Lives, State Violence in Canada from Slavery to the Present by Robin Maynard, and I hope I will be back again soon with another video.